It's Linda West with Living Live, and I'm excited today to interview Remy Mraz, founder of Me Time Network. But before we get started, I want to share with you guys that I'm going to be speaking at an event. I'm really excited for this because I've done a lot of speaking, but never on a big stage. This one is like on a big stage, and this is big time for me. So I'm really hoping that you can... Um, Come out with me and attend it with me. Go to ed, attend msb.com and that's San Diego from February 9th to February 11th. There's still plenty of time to get your tickets and come out and watch me speak on the big stage because I have a great speech I'm working with. I was talking to Les Brown and Greg Reed uh, the other day and they both actually helped me write my speech. So woo, woo, talk about big time, right? So I'm excited. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. And then today we're going to talk about startups and we're going to share uh, Remy's story of like how she started and where she is now and then what she sees for the future. But um, before we do that, I want you guys to go and share this video with anybody that you know who is starting up a company, especially if it's a tech company, because we're going to talk about some really interesting things here. I was talking to Remy before we got started and just like some of the things she has to share is going to be absolutely amazing. So first, Remy is the founder and CEO of MeTime Network. It's a new video on demand network featuring self-help experts in snackable video content, cognitively designed. That's a hard word for me to say, cognitively designed to help improve emotional intelligence, health and wellness. The concept for MeTime Network was born from life altering incidents incidents uh, that Remy encountered while growing up in San Diego and throughout her career where she witnessed challenges plaguing underserved communities surrounding mental health services. So she credits Oprah and her daughter as the driving forces behind her life mission to remove cost and shame as primary roadblocks for those seeking professional help and access to personal development training. So welcome, Remy. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. So happy. Let's talk about, um, so Me Time Network, when did the idea come about in the first place? Like, how long ago did it come about? About four years ago. It was about four years ago. I, I think it was really an idea in the making my whole life. If I look at all of my life experiences, I can, I can connect the dots with the good, the bad, the ugly, the personal, and the professional, that they mm -hmm. all happened and converged at this time you know to to make it happen and if you look at what's happening in the world today it's obviously more needed um it's needed more than ever before so yeah. but four years ago and it, i was actually in a personal development program through peak potentials and i broke through my fear of being an entrepreneur and yes. in that moment yeah in that moment that i actually broke through the fear um I started bawling like the ugly cry, you know, it was like this huge release of, of realizing that I wanted to, you know, start my own company and and um, just build a company. And I didn't know what it was, but the very next day, the whole idea and concept for me time came to me. Literally wow. over. So it was almost like I had to break through the fear and let it go so that I can make room in my brain to birth the idea. And it's it's been a work in progress ever since, but now like really taking off. That's fantastic because that's so true, right? We have blocks and these blocks literally do block us from progressing, from us thinking. And so once you released that, that huge block that you had, like you said, you like had ugly crying, right? <laughs> like, it was there. like I lost 20 pounds. Like, oh my I, God. like I felt so much lighter uh, breaking literally here and it was a per like it was a purge those those tears was like all the years of being afraid to do it because I'd always been entrepreneurial and I and I had I would say two other great ideas that are now like multi-gazillion dollar things happening in the world that I said mm -hmm. the next idea I get I'm not going to let it go I'm not going to give up I'm not going to quit um, and so that was it that's so fantastic. And then it happened the next day. That's really great. So I have a question. So this stuff came to you right the next day and then you acted on it immediately or what? Like what was your next step? No, there was some, um, I would say the idea, the concept came for me, but it was probably another year and a half of, you know, I was in this program, like I said, so I was going through this program and every class I went to, like, 
it helped shape and form it and what it would be. And mm -hmm. and then we did, um, we actually launched it as something else um, un under a different name and it was called the Maven Experience because the whole premise was to give people an online experience with Mavens. But then people didn't know what a Maven was. It was, mm -hmm. we were trying to do the branding around the me, the M and the E and Maven and experience. And people kept going, oh, that's so selfish if I do that. It was really interesting. And so it wasn't until we actually had our first video product, the Me Time Minute, where people would go, oh, I need me time. I don't get enough me time. Just adding the word time in there changed the whole psychology of it. And mm -hmm. that's how we shifted to Me Time Network. And the platform we are building, so it, it will be a web and app-based platform, will actually be Me Time TV. So Me Time Network's the parent company. Think of it like ABC. Like a net, right. network, and then Me Time TV will be the platform, and I'll liken it to um, like a Hulu or a Netflix, where mm -hmm. we want that go-to destination to improve emotional intelligence and mental health and overall, uh, you know, well-being. That's awesome. So, so Me actually stands for Maven Experience. Well, it did originally. originally. Not anymore. <laughs> Maven Experience is gone. <laughs> that is um, so cool. I love how it morphed into something different and it and it, it morphed kind of on accident, right? <laughs> well, I think the important thing here is that the importance of listening to your audience and to your customers, mm -hmm. right? So everything that we do is is based on what what people are telling us, what they need, what they want, how they feel, how it resonates with them. So that's, you know, definitely one of the big important lessons is, lessons to share is about listening to your customers. And, you know, I came up with this idea and, oh, it'd be so cool and Maven Experience, that's a cool word, but it doesn't matter what I think. Right? Right. It matters what's going to resonate with people and what they want. Right. And, you know, Les Brown actually said, let's see, I have it right here. He says, never let what you want to say get in the way of what your audience needs to hear. And that was exactly that, right? You need to actually listen to your audience instead of, you know, being so much in your own head of what you think they need or want. And so that's right. awesome. I love it. So now that was then about two and a half years ago, right? Because you had the idea about four years ago, about a year and a half, you started, you bring yep. out the Maven experience and then yep. it starts to morph. And then what happens after that? So what happened after that, so we were originally modeling after some other content creator studios um, <clears throat> that have had a tremendous amount of success, maker studios that got bought by Disney for like a hundred million or a billion dollars, something crazy. Um, and so what we were doing was we were asking the experts to shoot the video themselves. Like, so the whole concept of um, user generated content, right? So mm -hmm. asking the experts to shoot and that turned out to be a disaster because <laughs> we were creating more work for you guys, the experts. And, you know, they are already super swamped and busy. And so the experts that we are showcasing in our content, the first two programming products that we have are life coaches, therapists, psychologists, motivational speakers, and they're already busy. So, and then the quality control was all over the place. So we were getting videos back that, you know, the lighting, the backgrounds, everybody had a different interpretation of the rules we put out, right? Right. The instructions, <laughs> and it just didn't work. And so what happened was, was they started asking, well, what, why can't you shoot it? What, you know? And so then we were like, oh, and I, I used to work in television and, and it was like, duh, you know, let's do it. So obviously that creates cost for us um, to, to, to become a production studio. But essentially that's what we did to get our first programming products up and running and, and available for testing. And so once we did that, um, once we pivoted and we took control of production, then we controlled the timeline, we controlled the quality control. Yeah, we helped with the quality control and we went into the studio and then it was just a matter of sourcing the talent, right? Mm -hmm. And before we could source the talent, what we did was we surveyed um, HR executives, leaders in companies and the cons and consumers via social media, just from posting blogs and seeing what was trending and then our experts and what are the top problems that people are experiencing in their life in Hmm. the respective categories that we're focused on. So we're focused on eight key categories and that all came from serving. So again, listening, polling, talking to people, talking, 
literally, I'm not kidding, probably over a thousand people just getting information to see what what are those common threads that you know of problems that people experience in life. And so that's how we came up with our categories. That's how we sourced our experts from the beginning. Oh, that's awesome. So now while you were doing all of this though, were you working a job? Uh what what was your situation yeah. as far as that goes? <laughs> um you know, some people call me brave and um, other people think I'm just nuts. But um, oh, I get that too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I'll, I'll go ahead and take both of them. And it's probably a little bit more crazy than anything. So interesting enough, there was a lot going on in my personal life when I started all of this. Um, I was working a full time job. I had a, a great six figure sales job um, for a clean tech manufacturing company that was also a startup. Mm -hmm. And I, I had the master plan in place, right, that I am going to self-fund this business and do it on the side while I work my full-time job. And then when um, we went public and I had these wealth creation stock options that I was going to vest and cash out and, and then, you know, the company would be ready to sustain <laughs> me and a right. salary team and all of that. Yeah, well, the universe had a whole different plan in mind. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that company actually went down. It was backed by a venture capitalist, 200 million, and um, he pulled out, and oh. the whole company, 400 people lost their jobs overnight. And um, and then I also um, went through a divorce <laughs> all of the time. time. And, um, and I decided to move forward because, you know, look, I'm in my mid 40s, and I just felt like that it was now or never, that that I had these other great ideas before that I never acted upon and I did not want to live my life with regrets. Mm -hmm. And I just knew like just seeing what's going on in the world, doing the research, talking to people, everything that what we were building was needed. It was needed and wanted. And um, I had a choice to make. And uh, that, that choice was either like go back to work full time or keep going. And a gift from God came in the, in the form of um, my old roommates from college said, um, you can come live with us for rent free. And we want, we believe in you. We believe in what you're building and we want you to stay focused on what you're building. Wow. And so literally that's what, that was um, all of 2016. So that's what allowed me, us, the team to do what we did and accomplish what we accomplished in that year because I had, you know, a, a strong support system, not only to help me heal from the divorce, but also to keep me motivated and focused and going. And and so that's what allowed us to, to get, you know, get, we produced 200 videos last year. And wow. we tested all of those, you know, on social media platforms and it got us to where we are now. Um, you know, that, that arrangement was for a year. And um, in, so then I decided to move we decided to move the company up to LA because it's a better fit for what we're doing. We're on the fringe of tech and entertainment, media and healthcare mm -hmm. and LA is a, a much better fit for us um, to really take it to the next level. And, you know, now I'll tell you that the struggle is when you're, when you're starting a company and you're pre-revenue and you have to get a certain amount of traction before you can get investment money, you know, and I was, we'll talk about that in a minute. I was super naive about that. Yeah. Uh, there's this, there's, this is the, the crossroads, right? And, and the challenge that everybody has, and this is where you find out what people are made of and, and where people quit, you know, and succeed that you have to live, right? Mm -hmm. You have to live, but you have to build a company. You have to pay your own bills, but you have to pay a company's bills because there are bills that still need to get paid while you're building this thing. And before right. you generating revenue, you know, so that's, I would say, the big um, challenge now, like, obviously, we moved up here um, over the summer getting settled and, you know, acclimated and whatnot. But um, it, it's about and it's easy to want to go make money because you're sacrificing right now. You're sacrificing your personal life. You're sacrificing lifestyle. You know, I just bought a pair of shoes um, a few weeks ago. It was the first pair of shoes I bought in over two years. Yeah. <laughs> like, right, yeah. there's sacrifice that you have to make and it just comes down to a choice but the way I look at it is that it's temporary it's all temporary and it's just what has to get done 
to get to the next level and, and move yeah. along, you know? And you were mentioning how uh, like some people think you're crazy and some think you're brave and, and it is, it might be crazy in a way. Right. But there's this, like, there's this passion. Like, like you said, like once you made that release, this, this, idea was dropped to you and it's almost like you have to do it because I this is there, I, it's not a it, it actually isn't yeah. a choice for me it's a i have to thing and and what what it is is i found my purpose mm -hmm. so i found my purpose in life and that's where i was saying that you know that i can clearly look back and that everything that happened in my life has led me to building this right yeah. it, it was yeah. It's what I was born to do. And those experiences, you know, that I had in the workplace, that I had in my, you know, family life, my personal life, they wouldn't, they all happen for a reason. And, um, and I would invite people to really, um, you know, cause I meet a lot of people, special pe especially people in their thirties and in their forties, um, that have the golden handcuffs on, you know, they, they have a great job and make a great paycheck, but they're totally unfulfilled and bored. Yeah. And people ask, like, how did you do it? And um, it was figuring out what I was really good at, like what my skills were and what I'm passionate about and finding a way to marry those two things together. So I was always very passionate about personal development, professional development, therapy, coaching. Right. I mm -hmm. loved what those, what those things did for me personally and how I grew and generated success from Experience it. What I found is a lot of people don't get that opportunity, um, but that's what it was. It's converging of the passion and the skills, and finding a way to create a business out of it and and do it a little bit differently than what's being done. It's not reinvent. We're not reinventing the wheel, right? We're not doing anything. I mean, doing things that are um, that nobody hasn't done. We're just doing it in a different way and delivering it to um, people that haven't had it before. Or looking right for it. and yeah and that's so important to uh because i discovered my purpose too and that's exactly what happened to me because i had the cold in hand because i was 51 years old when i finally realized that my life was not being fulfilled and i was not living whatever my purpose was i didn't know what my purpose was at that time but i knew that that was not it you know and yeah. so you know make that leap from corporate and like i got to like what is it what is it i'm supposed to be doing and i did the same thing like i I looked at all my skills and then I looked at all my passions and I was like, how can I morph those together to utilize the skills that I've learned through all these jobs? I've had 49 jobs. So <laughs> you know. I'm doing that. <laughs> Hi, Judy. <laughs> Hi, Judy. We'll put, pop Judy on the screen there. Hello, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so it's, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but once you figure out your purpose, it's it's really your obligation to live it out. I mean, that's what you're here for. And yeah. so once you discover what that is, you know, it's really it really is your obligation because it's it's not only to yourself, but to others. It's like your purpose is for something. I believe we all have a purpose and yeah. some of us never discover it. And some of us do and don't do anything with it. And some of us do. And then we're the crazy ones who just keep going forward and saying, this is what I'm doing because I'm supposed to be doing it. And that's what you're doing, right? Yeah. And I would say that the, the biggest thing I've gotten out of it is emotional freedom. Yeah. I, I, I have emotional freedom because, and you know, and someone said, well, what if you fail? Okay. What if I fail? The worst thing that's going to happen is I can go back to a six figure corporate job. Right. Mm -hmm. Or I, and I said, but here's the thing. I will live my life with no regrets because I went for it. Yeah. You know? I at least yeah. tried. And, and that's, I mean, that's all you can do, right? It, it's really about taking action and, and getting it out of your head, getting out of your head and really just taking action. And look, there's tough days. I mean, I, I can't even tell you. <laughs> yeah. There's some really hard days. There's days where I'm on my knees praying, you know, to God. Um, how am I going to get through this? How am I, but it, it always comes through. And it's always about just finding a solution, you know, and, and at least doing one thing, even on those tough days. There's been some days where I couldn't get out of bed. You know, I mean, that going yeah. through a divorce while doing this was really, really hard, you know, really. Yeah. Um, but as long as you do at least one thing, you know, and then what happens is, is that once you start getting results and you start getting momentum, Right. It's fuel for the fire. It's like people are throwing logs on the fire. Yep. 
and then yeah. burning inside you. And, you know, people are like, how did you get this? How did you do what you did with virtually no money? And, you know, like, it's amazing. And no experience. We had no experience in production. We have no experience in technology. I mean, I found, I built a team. I have team members that have experience in those things, but I'm in a mm -hmm. huge learning curve. I didn't know how to be a CEO. Like I'm learning how to be a CEO, right? Um, we had to pitch investors. They're all things I had no idea. And um, but what happens is when you accomplish things and you get momentum, that fire like just grows and grows. And you know, I probably didn't sleep at all last year. You know, mm -hmm. but that's part of the sacrifice. But I'll tell you, so many of those sleepless nights were not because I was stressed, but it was because I was in creative mode and I was so excited I can't sleep. Exactly. <laughs> You can't sleep. You're just so excited, you know. Um, yeah, tonight you mentioned, well, you, you mentioned the freedom because really, I, I actually am working on a course right now that I'm putting out called Seven Keys to Freedom. And I believe the same exact thing because the freedom is up here and it's the, you know, the freedom to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want and where you want. And that's what I truly believe. And, and once you've discovered your purpose and you're living in your purpose, you are living freedom. I mean, that is like... Yeah. It is. I, I can't even just tell you how it, there's no words to describe it. There's yeah. no words, but it's, it's definitely very liberating. And, and at the end of the day, you know, it's up to you, right? You, you, you can count on you to get it done. So, yeah. but it, it now, takes action, you know? Now you, I, so I met you um, through me time and I am one of the experts in me time, which is right. awesome. And my expertise is overwhelm. You know, that's one of my expertises. And um, but then after, shortly after that, a mutual friend of ours, Infinity, said, Remy, you need to do this video challenge that Linda is putting on. This was last December. This was just a year ago. Can you believe it? It's only been a year. I know. And so you came in there and you're like, I really don't want to do this. But, you know, <laughs> but now now. What have you done since then, though? Because you've done a lot of videos. You've done a lot of pitching in front of venture capitalists. You've done a lot of stuff. What have you done this last year? Share with us. Yeah, but let me back up a little bit. What people need to understand is that four years ago, I was deathly afraid of public speaking. Okay. Deathly. <laughs> and I was, I've always been in sales, and I could do sales pitches in front of a, you know, in an office situation or in front of a client, right? Um, but I, I was, um, part of the thing that helped me was I became president of the Latina Business Women Association. You know, I did that for a couple of years. So I had to do a lot of public speaking. And so I kind of got over that. I mean, I, you know, I, I moved along, right? I'm just squashing mm -hmm. the fear. But the second part of it was the video part. I just thought it was so weird to talk into a camera, right? <laughs> and, you're like, and you're staring at yourself. It's just the strangest thing in the whole wide world. And that you have to pretend people are watching you or that maybe nobody's watching you and you just feel like an idiot. And so yeah. when she challenged me, I mean, I literally was nauseous. I was nauseous about having to do this. And, but what it did for me, right, what it did for me was just add to the confidence level of speaking, right? And telling our story and yeah. um, sharing with people. And what that did, in in now like that I can get up and do investor pitches, you know, whether it's in person on a stage or via video, which we did a couple of weeks ago, we had the pitch via video. Um, but the bigger thing was that we, it allowed us to connect with people all over the world. Mm -hmm. And one of the stories I want to share with you about that is, um, you know, one of the challenges you have is you're behind the scenes and you're building, building, building and, and you don't know if it's going to work and, you know, and or if it's helping people or not. People are watching the videos. But I, by doing those GSD videos, yeah, um, we got an email from a guy in Kenya, a Sudanese refugee, who said he came across my GSD videos and that led him to watching the Me Time Net the videos on Me Time Network. Wow. And he watched all of them. And now, mind you, this is a young man who's like 21 years old. He's lost half his family to war. Mm. He lives in a war-torn country. He's a refugee. And he said our videos gave him hope. Wow. And that they 
he was uh, sitting there writing this email at night. He couldn't sleep <laughs> because he was excited and come and he was in creative mode. Like he was trying to think of ideas, like how he could get out of his situation. Wow. And he said, not only did he feel like they could, they were helping him, but they could help his family, his village, maybe his country. And that was like a drop the mic moment. Right. So doing those GSD yeah. videos allowed us to share the story and just get now have a worldwide audience of people who are interested in rooting. And we're a Facebook buddy. He's always sending me motivational messages, you know, and it always comes on the day when I'm down and he's now mm -hmm. going to school. This young man is now going to school in Singapore um, mm -hmm. or somewhere in Asia and, and going to college. And that's so awesome. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. So that's the power yeah. Of sharing and right I mean that's what that video challenge did for me so thank you and that's great because you had an opportunity to say no I'm not gonna do it or to say yes right. and you chose yes now if you had chosen no things would have been differently but you um, you chose yes which meant you chose yes not only for you but for your audience and look at what it's done I and mean, that's so amazing so kudos to you because I know that I want to go look back at your very first video. And literally, I think it was like, yeah, yeah I'm finished. Oh, Tell me I'm doing this thing and I don't want to do it. <laughs> I love my camera. And it also, you know, we, my I chose to use the platform to share the, the good, bad and ugly of startup life. You know what it takes. Yeah. to raise money. And I've gotten so many messages from other women like, thank you so much. I'm now starting my own business, you know, or. I watched your videos and it helped me through this relationship or this situation at work, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it was just, and I think the other part of it is a lot, it allowed me and I, and I'm sure other people who did it to really sink into vulnerability and mm -hmm. get comfortable with it because you you have to put yourself out there. And here's what I'll tell you is once you learn to put yourself out there, nobody can ever make you feel embarrassed or ashamed of anything. Right. right. Because you're taking control of it you know, the situation, right? Or whatever the, whatever it may be. But yeah. once you get comfortable just putting yourself out there, you learn to laugh at yourself more and not take yourself so seriously and not get hung up like, an, oh my God, I looked like this or I did this or I made this mistake. Like you just learn to roll with the punches a lot better. Yeah, I learned to point out those things. Like if I make a mistake, I just point it out because instead of trying to hide it, I mean, because it's obvious it's there, right? So I just point it out. <laughs> Or like if my hair is all weird, like, oh, yeah, my hair is all jacked up today. Whatever. I'm st I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. My dad, you know, one of the things my dad was used to watch my GSD videos. And then he'd like he'd be commenting as I'm live, like, stop playing with your hair. I stop remember that. <laughs> so, so I've actually gotten a little bit better. I mean, it's not perfect, but I it's helped me just present myself publicly a lot better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I wasn't trying to like talk about the GSD videos or anything, but it was just like your your progress. So what you've gone from like, I don't want to do this really, but I'm going to do it. And then now, I mean, it's really amazing because you've made just huge, like you said, you know, confidence. It's really helped my confidence level tremendously. But now you, you've you gotten up and you've pitched, you know, several times. And how have the pitches gone? How do you prepare for a pitch like that? What like, what's the process that you do to prepare yeah. for a pitch? You know, pitching investors is not easy at all. Um, you know, I didn't, I've had tons of sales and marketing experience and I can do sales presentations all day long, but right. pitching investors is completely different. You know, my background isn't in finance um, operations, but you learn to have to tell your financial story of how you're going to grow and scale and people are going to make their money back, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have to learn who your audience is and really do do like not just pitch everybody. And I took a great course by um, Jeff Davids, JD Davids, who really taught us how to go about it strategically and pitch people who are in our space or interested in what we're doing or passionate about what we're doing. Um, I met another gentleman recently um, who was from Silicon Valley who said, look, you're going to have to kiss a lot of frogs, you know, <laughs> and that's like the sales game, right? You got to put, Go, have a lot of prospects go into the funnel until you get, you know, a couple that land. And so mm -hmm. that, what I would say the challenge has been for me, um, you know, having been a successful, you know, career independent woman who, mm -hmm. you know, um, got married later in life and, but, you know, I put my daughter in college, through college and, 
um, and has always been independent and taking care of herself, I have struggled with I looking at it like I have to ask a man for money because it's predominantly men that okay. middle aged men that are the investors. Mm -hmm. And that's something I've had to work on that I can't look at it like that, that I have to look at it as just business. Um, but that's something that's my work to do still on that piece of it. Right. And it's, yeah. And where I've said, I'm just, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go back to work full time and try to fund this. But it's like, no, you know, like you have, this is just the way the world is. That's why we need more female investors. They shouldn't get involved in organization like Hera Angels. Um, you know, we need to cultivate more female investors. You know, if, if more women, there's a lot of that goes to philanthropy. And I think that's mm -hmm. fantastic. But if we just took 5% of what we spend in philanthropy and um, nonprofits and put that towards investing in women, own businesses. Um, and there's a lot of great stuff happening now with all the sexual harassment stuff and, you know, people getting called out. That's been another big challenge um, for women. And, you know, this, I've uh, um, talked about these statistics before, but women um, entrepreneurs typically get three to 5% of venture capital. Minority women, women of mm -hmm. color get less than half a percent. Oh, wow. Not 1%, less than half a percent. So the odds are not in our favor. I mean, the odds are really stacked up against us, right? So mm -hmm. this is where, like, it's my job as the CEO to, like, do everything I can to learn and how to approach and how to pitch investors. But it's not easy. That's the hardest part of the game, you know. But that's why we moved to L.A., because L.A. has more early-stage investors here, um, more people in our space. Um, so it's just a matter of time. It's just knocking on a lot of doors. Yeah. yeah. And that's a good point there, because um, if somebody's thinking like, I think I want to you know, go for investors, you know, go for angel investors. And then they hear this, they might think, well, gosh, that's going to be a lot of work. Well, yeah, you know what? It is a lot of work, but yeah. you have to you have to decide, like, what do you want? You know, do you want to make a difference or do you want to just back down because something's hard? And no, you don't just back down because it's hard. You just keep going and pushing through and you'll you'll be one of the ones that helps to bring that point five percent up to the 1%, up to the 2%, up to the 3%. But if you didn't keep going, then that's not yeah. going to happen, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I and and I really feel a sense of responsibility for that. And that was a big that I had a lot of advocates work in the small business community. And I and what someone said to me one day, um, Remy, you have a seat at the table on the other side. You already have a seat at the table on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I said, and I never looked at it that way. And I realized, wow, this is, I, I, I had to make a conscious decision to stop doing what I was doing with volunteer work and focus 1000% on building my business and becoming successful and raising money. And then going, hey, you invested in me. Well, guess what? I got 10 more friends just like me, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and bring people to the other side because the problem with small business is people tend to think small and people don't even know that there's this whole other side where you can, you know, um, tap into funds and people tend to go the traditional round of bank loans and all this. But when you're in your first couple yeah. of years of business, you can't go get a bank loan, right? right. You don't, and if you're building a tech company, you don't have assets or goods that you can borrow against. I don't have equipment, right? I don't have clothing, you know, or a a product, I'm not manufacturing something. And yeah. so it's really hard if you're in the tech world to go that route. So the venture angel route is, or the angel venture route is the way to go. I mean, you have to go, right? So um, I do feel a sense of responsibility um, to to keep going and to help others along. But, you know, that, that and like I look, I have a daughter, you know, and mm -hmm. you always want things to be easier for your kids, right? And, and I look at that as other women as being that extended family. Yeah, that's true. And then they say, though, you know, like when you are encountering difficult times, those are the times you have to push through because it's on the other side is where the reward is. And if you stop short, then you're not going to have that reward. And, and like you said, you know, living your life with no regrets. Like my mom had a lot of regrets when she got to the end of her life. And I looked at that and I said, I don't want that. I'm going to make sure I do everything I possibly can to to be successful in what I'm doing. And that's what you're doing. Like now you have a, a situation uh, right now where uh, you've gone back to having a part-time job because things just weren't lining up exactly as you thought they were. But that doesn't mean failure at all. The failure yeah. would be if you stopped. Yeah. 
No, I, you know, and look, I, I, that, that situation where my friends came in, stepped in to be, you know, supportive, um, yeah. that was a gift, right? That was really a gift. And, you know, I was naive in, in, um, in how long things take. Things always take longer than, than what you expect. And also how much traction we would need to show before we can actually, you know, investors will write a check. We raised some money, you know, friends and family money, but, you know, people want to see your first hundred customers, right? They want to see X amount of social media following. They want to see your platform already built. Um, and so where we did go about it smart and strategic by leveraging existing social media platforms to test the content and validate, okay, that's great. So now we're actually in development of Me Time TV now. And so we'll have what we call an MVP version. Yay. Um, the, the minimum viable product um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then we've landed our first corporate beta clients to actually t let us test in the workplace now. So we tested oh, wow. on the side. So now we have corporate beta clients. Um, and then we actually got some interest um, from a hardware manufacturer that said, hey, I think we, your content on our products would be great. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, wow. So, so that's kind of like, you know, just keeping your eyes and um, open and, and being open to new things. Because at first, even when I was talking to him, um, I was so focused on, no, we got to get to the HR director so that we can go test with the employees, right? And he was throwing mm -hmm. up this idea. And I was like, well, I don't know, you know. And then he goes, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just going to be really frank. Like, why wouldn't you want to do this? And it was like, snap out of it, Remy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we <laughs> tend to get super focused, but it's about listening, right? Again, listening and being open to things are going to change and morph and shape, you know, in different ways. You're going to learn things from the failures, you know, um, that's going to have you take on a whole new direction. And you just got to really be open and flexible to to what's comes your way. That really is the key huh, to, to being open and flexible to the opportunities, because if you're not open and flexible, then you're not even going to hear the opportunities. They're just staring you right in the face. Like that one was like talking right to you and like, hello. No, no. Yeah. But, you know, the the working, having to work part time has actually been um, a blessing, not only because, you know, obviously you have to live and pay your bills. Right. But it's also um, what I found was I was actually approaching burnout you know, with, because I was going so hard in the business and then me being in sales, I'm so used to um, being out with people and traveling and, you know, entertaining clients and doing all of that stuff. And so mm -hmm. my whole team, we're all virtual right now and we work together a couple days a week, but for the most part, it, it can be very lonely and isolating yeah. and especially someone like me, who's a people person. So having a part-time job has actually been really good for my soul. You know, it's been really, um, um, I would say, rejuvenating for me. And also because I'm interacting with the public, you know, or like out and about and with people, I have a focus group every single day where I get to like bounce ideas and find out what people are going through. And, you know, again, yeah. it's all feeding what we're doing. Right. And as soon yeah. as I tell people what we're doing, they just start immediately start sharing, you know, their life challenges and wanting, you know, like. It, again, reinforcing and validating the need, you know, the need. Right. And so it's been it's been really great. Um, it you know, it's it's hard because I I'm very visionary and I operate at a thousand miles an hour. And so I can already see us in year five, you know, but right. my the reality hasn't caught up with the reality in my head. Um, yeah. But that's OK. <laughs> So. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Do you yeah. want to explain, just explain quickly uh, what Me Time is and how people can find it? Like, I have the website, but you also have YouTube and stuff like that. Do you want to just explain, you know, quickly, like what it is? Because I know it's bite sized. So just explain yeah. what it is. All of our, so think of it like Me Time TV is going to be like a Netflix or a Hulu, um, a video on demand streaming, you know, service platform that you'll be able to watch on your your phone, hopefully your TV one day, but also yeah. your, your computer. And it will be a subscription model, um, very, very low cost and affordable because we're trying to break down the stigma around mental health. 
and you know let people lack resources you know to go to go but we're going to have a variety of programming so right now what you see on the website are the first video products that we produced but we're going to have a lot more um, inspirational stories and some other things that I want to talk about too much um, right now but just think of it like a wide variety of programming and we want to be that go-to destination when you're feeling stuck or down or you need a pick-me-up and motivation and um, but it's really focused on helping people self-manage emotional stressors that they experience both in their work life and their personal life and we keep it short and snackable so one to two minute videos, um, maybe some that'll be a little bit longer in the future, but really so that it's not intrusive in your life. Like if you're stuck in a moment, you could be at work and go take some me time and go watch one of our videos. And not only are you gonna get emotional relief, but the advice you're gonna get from our experts is gonna be really succinct and grounded that you can go back in and create a different outcome to that difficult situation you may be in. And that's good because, you know, there's a, there's so many like motivational speakers and like all these motivational videos out there, but they're a lot longer where this is good because it's only a couple minutes, one to two minutes. And you can take one to two minutes to just take a break and regroup your mind, like listening to what these experts have to say. And so it's extremely valuable and it's fast info, which is good. So think about like this. If you if you already go to therapy or work with a coach, this is your continuity in between, right? Okay. You can't, you can't get to them, right? Uh, but for all the people who don't, because they can't afford to, because they've tried it, it didn't work, maybe it wasn't the right person for them, maybe they don't have the time, maybe they don't have insurance, whatever it is, right? Now you get access to the advice that if you were to go work with the person, they're going to give you in person, right? And we're not trying to replace people in the, human factor and you should we want to lead people to the experts who can help them because they're there and available but also we're really focused on the diversity factor as well there's um tremendous tremendous stigma in multicultural communities around mental health mm -hmm. and there's also a lack of um multicultural you know um, providers and so what we want to do is be that destination where you're gonna we're gonna showcase African-American, Latino, Asian experts, right? We're gonna produce stories and, and content that is relevant to multicultural communities and, and that people are experiencing in their day-to-day -day life. Just a perfect example of how we could come into play. So do you remember earlier this year um, in La Jolla in UTC, a man had lost his job, his girlfriend, and filed for bankruptcy all in the span of two weeks. And on a Sunday afternoon, he was at that apartment complex and opened fire at the pool. Mm. Now, and he killed one young woman, right, and injured a bunch yeah. of other people. Now, here you have a whole community that was traumatized, right, that has PTSD. Not only people experienced, but all the people who lived in that building and saw the whole thing happen, right? Right. And then you, right. Here you have a gentleman that experienced stressors that we all experience on a regular basis, someone breaking up with you losing your job, not being able to find a job, right? He filed a bankruptcy. We all have money challenges, right? At some point in our lives or another. Right. All of those stressors converged at one time and he lost it, right? And so now yeah. here's someone who didn't know how to get help maybe or didn't go do it or whatever that case may be. But then you have this whole other, you know, people who are traumatized by it and my, my, former roommate worked at, works at UCSD in the student um, psych health services, right? She said the next mm -hmm. morning there was a line outside her door, uh, their door because of all the students that lived in that building who now were trying to get an appointment with a the therapist because they were traumatized. And she wow. goes, this is so great about what you're building because if people had your app in that, in between getting an appointment, they could watch that and at least get some emotional relief, right? Or feel safe or whatever they needed. You know, so yeah. that's that's kind of like an example of how we can be in service, you know, to a lot of people in very difficult situations, you know, because they happen every day in life. And the more and more you watch the news, I mean, think of all the shootings we've had in the last month. I mean, crazy, right? It's, yeah. Yeah, I actually stopped watching the news because it just 
it just uh, is too depressing for me. And it might be ignorance, but you know what? It's <laughs> I'm a lot happier because of it. So, yeah. and that's it. People, you know, people have more stressors than ever, and have people just don't know how to cope with problems, you know. And so we want to help people, you know, improve their emotional intelligence, improve their emotional well-being. Yeah, and it's a fantastic, fantastic. It's MeTimeNetwork.com. Um, that's the website. And yeah. um, so right now, you... yeah, so right now people can just follow us and um, support us that way via social media and know that MeTime TV is coming in 2018. And, uh, and then they'll be able to. So on Facebook, it's MeTime Network, right? Oh, MeTime Network across all social media. Follow okay, me. Yeah. So YouTube. Story. Yeah. yeah. And then you can go on Instagram and follow her on Instagram. She does Instagram stories. <laughs> she just did one. I was like, I don't know how to do that. You get the behind the scenes of my interest. <laughs> yeah, so what would be your uh, top, um, now that you, okay, four years ago you had the idea to where you are right now. So in that last four years, what would be your, like, number one piece of advice to somebody who, like, all of a sudden they're like, oh, my God, I have this epiphany. This is what my purpose is. Oh, take action. I mean, like if you get, no, but seriously, if, I mean, when you have that epiphany, then it really is, um, I feel your responsibility to yourself, you know, to live your life fully, right. And to yeah. follow your dreams. And it really is, you know, come up with a plan and work the plan, you know, but that every day you have to take action and just really do your homework. You know, really do your homework on whatever it is you want to do. Um, right. I think the big the big thing, um, what I'm experiencing is that the highs are high and the lows are low. And <laughs> that for me now, it's really about managing, um, managing those those highs and lows and not getting too excited and not getting too down and really just taking an even keel. You know, um, it really is a. Um, a, a marathon, you know, it's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. so it, it's a journey and it's really about enjoying the journey of and and getting, there's so many lessons that come, you know, gifts, you know, in the way of people or experiences and really um, taking those into account and, and growing and learning from them. Yeah, and that's, that's a great point. It's doing like doing your research is really important and just making sure that you you said make a plan and follow it and like, don't get too excited yeah and don't be and be flexible right because things are going to change all along but right yeah you can't i think managing the emotions part of it because it's it it gets easy if you get down to quit to want to quit you know and you've got to have a strong support system around you and of course watch our videos because they'll help you <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And, you know, that's a good point there because you um, you said, you know, take action. So a lot of times what happens is we get really excited about something and then we get nervous because it's something different. But if you just take action on it and just make it happen, you'll see that it will turn out okay. It's going to turn out okay. Find people who are supported to be around you. Find people who have um, gone before you and ask them, like, how did they get there? So maybe you can save some time, some aggregate aggravation and money and all of that stuff, right? Yeah. And that's why I share what I share, you know, and, and I'm going to put myself out there because if I can help anybody save time or money or frustration, you know, then, um, I mean, my job yeah. is going on that perspective, you know, that's, that's the key of sharing. And, you know, it's also important with social media not to get up too caught up in, in other people's stuff and like maybe other yeah. companies or startups that you're following. You know, because I I've done that before. I'm like, oh wow, they're they're moving further along than we are. Why are, we're way behind? Or you know, you get all caught up. And then I talk to them, and they're like, same struggles, same challenges. You know, and yeah. at the end of the day, like the social media piece, like don't don't get caught up in that aspect of it. You really have yeah. to stay focused and on your own journey. And everybody's journey is different. You know, um, I think I shared before with you before we started. You know, one of the challenges we have is. Like I'm a non-technical founder, you know, mm -hmm. and so I'm building a tech company. So I have a great CTO that I brought on board, but we're competing with, um, you know, a lot of developers who come up with apps and they go build it themselves and they do it really quickly because they can't, right? And right. we get all this traction. 
and you just can't compare your experiences, your learnings, um, you know, your road, our business model is very different. You know, we have to go produce a whole library of content, you know, in addition to building an app, in addition to getting customers, right? So every yeah. journey is different and you just have to really stop and take a look at what yours is and enjoy it. Hi, Valerie, how are you? Happy to Hello, see Hello, Valerie. You. So you put Valerie up there. Um, and that's so true because you, uh, you're, we're all in different stages. And so if you're comparing yourself to somebody who's at a different level and they have different, just totally different experiences, you can't compare yourselves to them, yourself to them. You have to compare yourself to where you were yesterday. And then exactly. just keep your mind forward on your forward progress. Because once you start comparing yourself to others, yeah. then you're, you're gonna feel defeated sometimes. Yeah. And do you want that? No. No. <laughs> And I think that another important thing is to celebrate the wins and the successes, you know, so like I said, because I'm in year five in my head and, um, you know, operate a thousand miles an hour that I'm so used to like, go, 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 do, do, do. And it wasn't until somebody said, you produced 200 videos, you went through three accelerators, you, you pitched in six contests, you know, like, and you right. knew nothing about any of that. And, you know, like, and I went, oh, yeah, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, <laughs> well, we did a lot. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, you know, I, what I started doing a couple of years ago um, is I, well, at the end of each month, I look back at the previous month to give myself kudos for what I have accomplished. Because if you all are only forward looking, which is great, you want to keep looking forward, but it's also important for you to know what you have accomplished so that you can pat yourself on the back and say, wow, look what I've done. I mean, this is amazing. I'm going to keep going because I feel so good about what I have done. Right, you know, and, and also take a look at what didn't work, right? Yeah. So that you can adjust accordingly and, um, and move forward more strategically and a little more, you know, smart. Um, and, and, and to learn from those mistakes. You know, you want to have mistakes. You want to have failures. I mean, that's where the greatest, greatest growth comes from, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we've done so far. So, yeah, <laughs> well, failing forward, failing forward. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, you know, I just I love what you're doing. Again, it's a me time network. Let me put that up on the screen there. Me time network dot com. Go check them out. Go check out me time network on all the social media platforms. They're on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I don't know, Pinterest. I don't know wherever you guys are. <laughs> where there's social media, they're there. Go yeah. check them out. Really great videos. If there's a particular topic that you want to watch a video about, you know, type it into the search engine and find it because there's all yeah. kinds of them. Go watch my videos. Mine are on overwhelm. So. Yeah, overwhelm. <laughs> yes. Everybody has overwhelm. And if anybody has um, uh, a, a company or they are in HR or knows somebody and they'd be interested mm -hmm. in being a beta um, tester of the platform, it's we're not charging. We're just looking for companies who would let us test in, in the workplace. Um, feel free to reach out directly and cool. um, yeah, and, and share. And so should they, should they just go to metimenetwork.com to find out how to reach out to you or reach out to you? Or, or just reach out to me direct on Facebook. Just message me. Um, that would be great. Or they okay. can or email me at remy, R-E-M-Y, at metimenetwork.com. Time with a Y. So R-E-M-Y at, oops, I don't know if I can type it fast enough, metimenetwork.com work.com yeah. uh, there we go sharing yeah <laughs> remy at me time i spelled it right okay good <laughs> yeah so email her there if, yeah if you know anybody in hr that would like to do the beta go ahead and reach out to remy and she would love to hook up with you yes thank you very much thank you linda thank you remy i really appreciate you being here and i'm so glad you did that first video because here you are today like just doing amazing, amazing yeah. stuff i love <laughs> it you. So everybody have a great day and I shall see you later.